In a recently published notice of intent to prepare an EIS, or Environmental Impact Statement, the FAA has listed the renewed intentions of SpaceX regarding Starship at Launch Complex 39A, and well, I think these are quite telling of what SpaceX has in store, so I've summarized the most important things for you, let's have a look at them. First of all, SpaceX has already been doing substantial construction work at that future launch pad for Starship since 2019. So you may be wondering why they are doing an environmental assessment again. And the reason for that is that SpaceX has proposed further changes that were not covered under the original assessment. Things like increased launch frequency, new infrastructure and technologies, changes in landing and launch procedures, changes in vehicle design, so let's have a look at these proposed changes. SpaceX is looking to increase the yearly launch capacity at the Cape to 44 launches, which can occur either during the day or at night. That's 20 more than originally planned, which if fully taken advantage of, would mean three to four Starship launches per month. These missions will support a variety of objectives, uh, including sending cargo and astronauts to low Earth orbit, the moon and Mars as well as uh, deploying satellites. SpaceX is also proposing new infrastructure improvements. Within the context of the uh, 2019 environmental assessment, Starship landing locations included landings on one at uh, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, downrange on a drone ship, and uh, a new landing pad at LC-39A. Landings for the Super Heavy Booster were proposed to occur downrange on a drone ship and uh, not conceived to return to the launch pad. This has now obviously changed, and so SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in, this, uh, in the previous environmental assessment. These include a Super Heavy Booster catch tower like the one down at Starbase, a natural gas liquefaction system and earth separation unit for propellant generation and uh, deluge ponds. Starship landings on landings on one are also off the table now. What's on the menu though are drone ship landings. Take a look at this. Each Starship Super Heavy orbital launch would include either landing the Super Heavy booster at LC-39A or downrange in the Atlantic Ocean on a drone ship or expanding the booster in the Atlantic Ocean, no closer than approximately 5 nautical miles off the coast. Starship could also land back at the launch pad on, on a drone ship or be expanded in the high seas uh, between 55 degrees south latitude and 55 degrees uh, north latitudes. Another kind of surprising point is the fact that uh, SpaceX is also planning to increase the number of engines on Super Heavy from 33 up to 35, putting Super Heavy at around 8,000 tons of thrust, or around 79,000 kilonewtons. Although maybe that's not that shocking if we look at their plans to stretch the vehicles by several meters, so it looks likely that they will need that extra thrust. NASA has initiated a review by external experts to evaluate the agency's analysis of damage to the Orion spacecraft's hit shield, which occurred during its re-entry on the Artemis 1 mission in December of 2022. This was the uh, spacecraft's first unpiloted test flight around the moon, uh, during which it experienced the loss of chunks from the hit shield as it re-entered back into Earth's atmosphere. The heat shield, composed of 186 blocks of a material called AV code or AF code, is meant to erode in a controlled manner during re-entry. However, the mission revealed over 100 instances where pieces were unexpectedly stripped away, creating cavities almost similar to potholes. This unforeseen damage has raised concerns about the shield's ability to adequately protect future missions, including the the upcoming Artemis 2, which plans to carry astronauts. To address these concerns, NASA has been conducting ground tests and analysis to replicate and understand the issue, but despite these efforts, the exact cause of the heat shields under performance remains undetermined, and the ability to fully test and simulate the conditions experienced during re-entry is limited. The independent review team set up by NASA in late April aims to ensure a thorough understanding of the issue and the development of effective corrective actions uh, before Artemis 2 
and uh, subsequent missions. The review, expected to be completed by summer, involves assessing various theories and findings from NASA's investigations. And you know, this shows how challenging it is to re-enter Earth's atmosphere when coming back from the moon. You're gonna collide with the atmosphere at around 11 kilometers per second. That's almost 7 miles per second of speed at uh, Mach 32. And you better believe that's going to do a number on your heat shield. So with this in mind, for Artemis 2, NASA will test modifications or strategies that may include altering the spacecraft's uh, re-entry trajectory uh, to manage thermal loads more effectively. And uh, to end this section, I just want to tell you that I am really looking forward to this mission because even though they won't land on the surface, it will be the first time in over five decades that we send people flying around the moon and uh, that is in and of itself a huge achievement. I really can't wait to see pictures again of astronauts looking down to the moon from the capsule windows. At least at that moment it will be clear to the rest of the world that this is really happening. Now to end this quick video, there are a couple of interesting things going on down at Starbase that you should know about. Booster 11 is back at the launch pad, likely in preparation for a wet dress rehearsal, and Ship 29 will soon follow suit, so that means that there might be still enough time for Flight 4 to happen before the month ends. No sooner had Ship 30 finished its static fire test than SpaceX workers were already picking the stand apart. Sad to see it go, it surely made a ton of history, but it is what it is, and an era must end so that a new one may begin. And from now on all future ship static fire tests uh, will take place at masses. And with that I thank you a lot for watching yet another video of mine. Have a nice day, whatever you are. Please enjoy the northern or southern lights if you get the chance to see them. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.